Hi, how are you doing? Hi. Excellent. Um, so I'm Gary Lodgeny from uh, Dot Digital. I'm here to, uh, in 15 minutes, tell you about uh, the future is now, are you ready for it? Um, so I'm going to do that, hopefully. Um, this is our little mascot, Winston. So if you guys want one, you can come to our stands. I'm going to throw it into the crowd now. Catch it. Give them a good home, OK? Good, good. Um, before I continue, I do this all the time, I'm going to take a little selfie. Um, so you guys will all be in it, hopefully. Uh, OK. Let's do this. You ready? One, two, three. There we go. One more, one more. There we go. Excellent. Right, let's do this. Okay, so um, what is the future? What is the future? I was, um, when I was coming here, I went to the airport, at Heathrow Airport. There's these little pods that take you from one of the terminals, uh, from the, one of the car parts, sorry, to a terminal, and it's uh, automated. You kind of get into it, and it just takes you on to the, to the, to the, to the terminal. And that's, that feels like the future to me. So that's possibly the, the future. But I guess in our industry, what is the, the future? It's uh, probably uh, voice activation for things, um, different channels, using different channels, um, and possibly AI, AI, machine learning, that type of thing. Um, so within our platform, we have a, a bit of AI, um, and it helps you kind of churn through um, sort of information. It takes like images that you upload and will sort of cut through this and use all of the, um, the stuff, the metadata to, to find out the attributes for this, this jacket. Um, so you can use it and then segment and then take this and use all the attributes and send it out to the right person. So you're sending out the right image for the right person. So I guess that's, that's, kind, of, that's kind of cool, that's kind of futuristic. Um, Google RCS. This is really cool, this stuff. Um, rich communication service. So, uh, so this is this is really nice. It's like carousels within the within the app. Um, you can buy directly within the app. Um, you can uh, even like choose your uh, your seat uh, on a plane or on a train or anything like that. So that's really cool. Um, it's not here yet. That's coming, I guess, in the, in the UK maybe towards the end of the year. Um, but that's that's really cool stuff, and it's it's really powerful. It's, I, I guess it's really good for for marketers as well as um, for customers too. So that's uh, that's really nice stuff. Uh, WhatsApp. Oh, that's that's uh, that's all good. That uh, video's not working. Um, WhatsApp. Um, what's supposed to be from here uh, was a video from KLM, um, and they're using WhatsApp to kind of uh, basically harness the 1.5 billion users of WhatsApp. Now, it's not necessarily the future, but I guess the way we're we're using it isn't quite there yet. In China, WeChat, they use something very similar, and it's, it's really quite powerful the way they use it. So we're not quite there yet, but you know, we can be using more of this stuff, um, and I guess that's what we're looking for, and that's, that's uh, I guess, the future too. But you guys using all of these, these three things I've, I've just talked about? Possibly, maybe not. Um, and there's probably a reason why you're not using all of them, because, I mean, these things are all here now. The, the future is now. But if we're not using these things, there's got to be a reason why we're not we're not using all of them just yet, right? So uh, what could it be? Now I um, I was doing some uh, some research here with the, the DMA, and 38% uh, of marketers in this report said that um, data was a challenge for them. Okay, and I, I feel like that's a, that's a normal thing. A lot of people think that data is a, a challenge for them. 42% um, that uh, said that budget was also an issue for them. And I hear that all the time, we haven't got enough budget, and you know, we've got a small team maybe, we haven't got the right resources, so yeah, that's, that's one thing. And then 25% say that strategy and leadership is an issue for them. Now when I look at this, I think to myself, well actually, strategy and data, they kind of go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. It's kind of what you need. So maybe, you know, if these are the issues we're having, we've got to sort these things out first before we can be ready for the future. Um, so I look at this and I kind of think to myself that if we have poor data and poor strategy and poor tech, then that could lead to, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> yeah? You're laughing. <laughs> but do you, some people feel like that? You know, you just don't know what you're doing. Maybe you've got a strategy from, from uh, your bosses, um, but you don't have the right data to execute it. Or maybe you've got really good data, um, but now what? Or maybe you've got both, but then you don't have the right tech to, to, to sort of put that into, into action. Um, so instead of thinking about you know, what is the future, maybe you should be asking yourself these things. 
Easier to check up to scratch. Well, if it's not up to scratch, you can use us, and uh, that'll make your lives a lot easier. So that's, uh, that's, that's an easy one. Um, do you have the right strategy in place? And then finally, uh, are you utilizing the right data to optimize both? Okay. So instead of what is the future, maybe you should be asking yourself these questions and, and, and sort of fixing that first. So I have these uh, five pillars, I guess, of like e-commerce that we should be looking at first to kind of prepare ourselves for the future. Looking into data, um, insight, getting deeper into that data, uh, engaging with your audience better, uh, converting, and then retention, retain. That's one of the most important things, retaining. So I'm gonna go through, through those five points and kind of explain a little bit more. So data, this is one of my favorite things. I'm a bit of a data geek. Um, I'm not gonna ask you to hold up your hands if you're a data geek as well, but I love data. I do this other talk called Data is Sexy, because I truly believe data is sexy. It's the power, um, it gives us the, the power to, to build all our campaigns. So data is what we need. We need to collect the right data. Um, and you know, RFM modeling, I'm not gonna go deep into this, but this is a great way of when you're collecting the data, maybe email address or phone number, um, you need to put them into, into these pots. So recency, uh, the date of the, the last purchase. Um, frequency, uh, you know, how many times someone's purchased uh, from you up to, to, to this date. And then monetary, um, the sum of you know, what they've purchased up to this date as well. So you can get all of these uh, pots of data and that's gonna help you to create a good database um, to help uh, target and personalize content to, to these people. So that's a, a good place to start. Um, but you're gonna wanna get deeper into that. So this is where insight uh, comes into play. You know, building like a, a rich um, sort of program around these people, really understanding, getting into the, under the skin of exactly what these people are and what they're, they're doing exactly. Um, so this is kind of where we maybe jump into the future a bit. Okay, because we can start to look into AI, machine learning, product recommendations, that type of thing. You know, that can help us get the, the edge. And it's gonna help us do these three things. Recognize, remember, and recommend, okay? Recognizing that there's, a, there's an opportunity, uh, remembering who people are, and then recommending something that is for them specifically, okay? Now you can take, I guess, uh, the next best uh, product or um, that, that type of thing and put that into a campaign and that'll be helpful enough. But what that's doing is, is kind of like switching on a light in a room that is already pretty well lit, okay? You need something else, you need an edge. If you use product recommendations that are gonna be smart, learning about people's movements around the website, what they're looking at, what they're interested in, you know, those product recommendations are gonna give you the, the edge, the AI. So instead of turning on lights in rooms that are already lit, you're gonna be turning on lights in rooms that you didn't know you even had. Okay? And that's going to give you the, the competitive edge of your, your, um, your um, competitors and going to get your customers keep coming back and back for more and more. So that's the type of thing we, we want to be looking at. But when you use it, it's going to get you going, yeah! yeah. Because right? you're going to be winning. And don't take it from me, you know, using these bits and pieces. Um, big commerce have said that if you're using uh, product recommendations, it can make a difference. So your store revenue can go up by 300% your conversions up by 150%, and your average order value up by 50% as well. So this is, that's the type of, type of competitive edge that you're looking to get when you use things like um, product recommendations and AI. Next up, engage. You're gonna to wanna to engage more with the, the people that you're, you're sending out to, um, and really, really make a difference, and especially on different channels. Um, if people are in, in different modes, you're gonna to want to use the right channel for them in that particular time. So these are the different channels, so omni-channel, SMS, email, push, and chat. You know, if someone is kind of static, then maybe you want a longer term uh, tail message. So maybe something like email or chat can work better for them. If they're static, um, sorry, if they're, if they're active, they're really on the go, then maybe something quite pushy, um, quite punchy like SMS or, or push, okay? So that can work better for them. But once you have that, you don't want to really grab their attention. So things like these, these are kind of interactive uh, campaigns and I, I love these because it really does sort of capture people's attention. And this one from Nike I really like here because it hovers over the, the top, it tells you more about it, it ties more about it, it shoes more about it. That really entices people, really um, sort of pulls them in. Or you can go down this route and using a GIF. This is, um, this is one of our clients, Larson and Jenny. Um, they've used this for 11-11, uh, which is a single day. 
Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the whole point of this is, I read an article from Litmus the other day, and it said that um, companies that fare better are using GIFs more in their campaigns. Okay, they have more GIFs in their campaigns. Um, and I don't know if that's a hard or fast rule, but actually, if you're using more GIFs, maybe you're thinking more about the content in there, and you're thinking more about the subject line, etc. So you're going to be more attention grabbing, and this sort of thing can help. Convert. You're going to want to convert people, obviously. This is where you're going to get your cash. Um, hopefully, your website's converting better for you. Um, but if it's not, you're going to want to sort of recoup people. And a great way of doing that is by using uh, abandoned cart emails. Now, this one here, this example, is, is kind of texty, but the whole point is that, is that you kind of read through it, and as you read through it, you know, it's going to push you through to, to purchase. This one here is from uh, ASICS, and uh, within this is what you left in your basket, but they also have some new arrivals as well. And my favorite one here is from Adidas, and it's basically saying, is your Wi-Fi okay? Because if it was, then you'd purchase already, right? Um, but if you haven't, then you've got some, uh, some recommendations from here, uh, from, from other people who purchase as well. And those recommendations are what you need to retain people. And retention is the thing that people always forget. Um, you, you work so hard to, to collect uh, customers. Um, but then don't do bits and pieces like the after sale to make sure you, you keep them. Uh, we did a report earlier this year, uh, sorry, last year, and it said 53% of marketers don't have a follow-up campaign, like a post-purchase post campaign. It's one of the most important things you can do to find out what you're doing well and keep doing it, or if you're not doing something well, fix it and show them that you're, you're fixing it. Because 47% of customers would switch to a competitor within a day of poor customer experience. Okay? You don't want that for yourself. You want to do a lot better. So you know, taking that on board, putting together a campaign like this, and this is, this is an old campaign from uh, EasyJet. It's a couple of years ago, but I love it because it makes data sexy. Okay? It's taking the information for the, the first a uh, place that someone's flown to, putting it into the campaign, um, how far they've flown with them, if the fact that they like the window seat more than, than other seats, um, the last place you've flown to, and also a recommendation of where you should go to next. All of that is the data that's been pumped into the campaign to, to build this, and I think that's an excellent campaign. That's really what you want. Because okay? it's really about EasyJet, all about EasyJet, but they've made it personalized to the individual that's receiving it. And I think that is what we're, what we're looking for. Right, so I've, uh, I've gone through a lot there, so let's just kind of uh, summarize this. So first off, you want to be capturing the data to build relevant segments so you can target your content. Okay? Dive deeper into, into the data so you can remember, recognize, and recommend to them. Um, engage all channels, um, so what channel is right for them in a particular time, but make an impact and you know, be attention grabbing. Um, make the transaction seamless, hopefully you can drive them through to the website, but if you can't, you can retarget them and, and, and recoup them and, and get them back into the fold. But then focus on reviews, um, leverage experience, and get them to come back to you. you know? Make sure you're, you're following up after the sale. So that's all in good, but I want to leave you with this here. Um, you shouldn't be assuming what you want to be sending out to people. Use the data. You know, don't think about the creative first. Think about the data first. And if you are thinking about the data first, then you will be ready for the future.